Vinnie Fisher Cunningham was a remarkable yet commonly unknown individual from the post World War era. She was a suffragette and instrumental to the signing of the 19th Amendment, the one which gave women the right to vote. She lived her life as a feminist politician, and although she is a person known by a few, her impact is enormous. Cunningham was born on March 19, 1882. She was born on Fisher Farms in New Waverly, Texas. She was born to Horatia White and Sally Abercrombie Fisher. Her father was a well-known planter who had also been in the House of Representatives of the 7th Texas Legislature from 1857 to 1858. Cunningham's mother did not work, but educated her daughter at home. Cunningham was introduced to politics by her father, who often took her to political meetings in Huntsville, where discussions would take place about current events. Cunningham was brought up in Texas, where she was born, and because of the education she had received from her mother, she was able to pass a state examination and get her teaching certificate at the age of 16. After a year of teaching young children, Cunningham decided she wanted to enroll in the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston. This is where she went on to get her degree in medicine and was one of the first women to do so. This was in 1901. A year later, she was working as a pharmacist in Texas, and it came to her attention that the men in her pharmacy made significantly more money than she did despite doing the exact same job. It was this unfairness that caused Cunningham to enter the world of politics as a suffragette. In 1902, Cunningham married Beverly Jean Cunningham, who was a lawyer and an insurance executive. The marriage was not happy due to both Mrs. Cunningham's political activity and to Mr. Cunningham's alcoholism. 1910 is when Cunningham's career as a politician truly began. Three years prior, she and her husband had moved to Galveston. Now that she had been elected the president of the Galveston Equal Suffrage Association, Cunningham did not work here long. She eventually left to work for the Texas Women's Suffrage Association. After five years of work there, she was elected the president. She proved herself an excellent leader as three years later, in 1918, she had gained the approval of women's suffrage in the state primary elections. 1919 is the year Cunningham began working diligently to get the 19th Amendment ratified. She had been persuaded to do this by Carrie Chapman Catt, the president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association, which Cunningham had worked for before. Cunningham's first course of action was to go to Congress and begin lobbying the amendment. Once the amendment was passed, it was sent to the states to be ratified, so she spoke to several state representatives individually and convinced them to ratify it. The 19th Amendment officially became law on August 18, 1920. Immediately after her work on the amendment, Cunningham helped found and became the executive secretary of the National League of Women Voters. In 1927, after several years in politics, Cunningham's husband died. His estate remained unsettled, so Cunningham traveled back to Texas to settle it. Around this time, elections were occurring, so while Cunningham was still in Texas, she decided to run for office. She was the first woman to run for the Senate. Although she promised many objectively good things during her campaign, such as tariff and tax reduction, cooperation with the League of Nations, and more, she came in a fifth out of six in the primaries. After this, Cunningham became an editor for the Texas A&M Extension Service. She edited for them for nine years until 1939. In 1939, she returned to Washington, where she began work as an information specialist for the Women's Division of Agricultural Adjustment Administration. At this time, World War II was occurring, and Cunningham worked for the Roosevelt administration. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the president, and he recognized her as an important part of his administration. He even gave Cunningham the nickname for which she is most commonly known, Minnie Fish. In 1944, the time came for delegates to be elected for the Democratic State Convention. Cunningham ran an outspoken campaign against Coke Stevenson, and although she was once again defeated during the primaries, she came in second out of nine candidates, losing to Coke Stevenson. Cunningham finally retired in 1946 at the age of 64. She went back to Fisher Farms in New Waverly, where she had been born, and tended to her cattle. However, she did not fall completely out of touch with politics. She still campaigned for the Democratic Party and did all she could to support local causes. She supported civil rights on her local school board after the famous Supreme Court case Brown v. Board of Education. She founded the Texas Observer in 1954 and helped found an organization of liberals called the Democrats of Texas. When she was 78, Cunningham was in charge of the campaign headquarters for John F. Kennedy in New Waverly. She died on December 9, 1964 at the age of 82 and was buried in New Waverly where she had lived out the majority of her life. Minnie Fisher Cunningham is more or less unknown. She is nowhere near as famous as some of the other politicians from her era, although she accomplished more than many of them. She was the main driving factor in getting the 19th Amendment ratified. Without her, women's suffrage would have taken much longer to achieve nationwide. Despite all of her hard work, Cunningham has gone largely unappreciated. This is due in part to several things, but nevertheless, it does not change the massive impact Cunningham has had on women's rights overall. To begin with, Cunningham was not born into a famous family. Her parents had done well enough to be wealthy and to be in the upper class, but they were not politically famous, nor were they famous to begin with. Cunningham's father was simply well known in his field of business. Cunningham's upbringing was nothing extraordinary for the time period. Many boys and girls were educated by their parents. Her life as a young adult was also quite typical of the time period. 
When she married, she did not marry anyone famous, so her husband did not help her become a more memorable or well-known person. Overall, Cunningham's life before she became involved with politics was quiet and easy. This meant that as she entered the field, she was largely unknown. To most, she would have been just another woman hoping to change things for herself. Her entrance into the world of politics was slow and gradual, and her early success was based largely off of connections, but in time she made a name for herself and earned the love and respect of her followers. She set goals for herself and worked towards each one step by step. The ratification of the 19th Amendment was one of these goals, and possibly the most important. Cunningham did not view the 19th Amendment as her final goal, though. To her, it was a step in the right direction, albeit a large step. She did not stop working after it was ratified. Instead, she went out of her way to ensure that women knew how to use the right they had so recently been given and taught them how to be productive members of society. Cunningham has remained relatively unknown because she was not actually the one writing or signing the 19th Amendment. She was simply the one who pushed it along, and for that, she has been given almost no credit. Another reason her name is not famous is because she was never elected into office. She ran for the Senate and would have changed history if she had won, but she did not. Overall, Cunningham's lack of infamy is due to the fact that, in the game of politics, she herself was not a player, but rather a person pushing the players along. Although she is not well acknowledged in the modern day, she was at least acknowledged by the Roosevelts for her hard work, and her work is appreciated by many lovers and fanatics of American history. Regarding her impact, not enough can be said. Cunningham affected the country in a way that could not be described. She was an example of what women should do. She showed why women are equal to men. She was a model example of how feminists should reach for equality without being negative towards men. She helped give women a voice in government and then inspired them to use their own voices. She was a leader who many followed and who was a large contributing factor to bringing about women's rights. Specifically, her impact can be seen in the work she did for all the organizations she was involved with throughout her political career. The first one she joined, the Galveston Equal Suffrage Association, was her stepping stone into politics. She became president of this association. During her time there, Cunningham fought for women's suffrage on a small scale, fighting mostly for women in Galveston and surrounding cities, but not yet women across the state or nationwide. The main impact of this first step was that it introduced women in Galveston to Cunningham. This step also led Cunningham to the Texas Women's Suffrage Association, where again she was elected president. The impact of the TWSA was that the prior president, Annette Finnegan, had already been fighting for the 19th Amendment by going to legislators and convincing them to fight for women's suffrage. This was a huge help when Cunningham came along because many important politicians were already on her side, making the ratification of the 19th Amendment that much easier. Cunningham's final year as president, 1919, was the year the 19th Amendment was ratified. Cunningham's next step was to work for the National League of Women Voters, an organization still around today. Her focus here was to help women carry out their responsibilities as voters and to encourage them to add their opinions to the overall voice of new women voters. The effect of this was that the millions of women who earned the right to vote were able to use it constructively rather than destructively on a national scale and they were also able to help themselves. Cunningham then edited for the Texas A&M Extension Service, a service which taught people about agriculture and farming, which was a growing industry. This allowed women to work in this field who previously had not been able to due to lack of knowledge. Also, Cunningham knew quite a bit about agriculture and it was a passion of hers, having been born on a farm and her father having been a planter. Continuing with agriculture, Cunningham worked for the Women's Division of Agricultural Adjustment Administration. This administration worked to help agriculture become prosperous and lucrative, and Cunningham specialized in the Women's Division. This helped women introduce themselves to the workforce and become familiar with their rights as voters, and also familiarize them with the reality of the idea that they were equal to men. Cunningham moved on to work for the Roosevelt Administration, where she supported FDR and continued representing women and their ability to be successful in politics. The Roosevelt administration was the last organization Cunningham worked for before she retired. After her retirement, she fought not only for women, but for all liberal causes. Each of the organizations she had worked for had unique impacts, but they all worked towards similar goals. Gaining suffrage for women, teaching women how to use their rights, and teaching women how to be important members of society within the workforce. Despite the fact that Cunningham has a name unknown to most, her impact as an individual and as a member of all the organizations she worked for is still seen today. The 19th Amendment would have been even harder to ratify without her, and women after they gained the right to vote would have been lost without her. Famous politicians such as FDR and John F. Kennedy were her friends and they swore by her. The people of Texas, particularly the women, loved her and wanted her in office. Although there were people who disagreed with Cunningham, she had the love and respect of those who mattered most to her, the woman who she was fighting for. Overall, the very long and arduous journey to equal rights for women would have taken longer, been more difficult, and less attainable had it not been for Minnie Fisher Cunningham.